live and we are gonna, I'm gonna show you um, the basics of violin so that you know what to do. Sorry, I sound like I'm stalling. I am kind of stalling. I actually have a test going on with a few streaming services, so I was curious how that would look. Anyway, so I wanted to show you the parts of the violin so that you can start your violin journey. So I actually have a book, it's called NYC uh, Studio, Absolute Beginner Violin Method. So I read this book and basically I wrote it for adults um, because you guys are smart, you know, you have a large vocabulary, you know basic math, so uh, this is a good thing for you to have a look at. So um, <clears throat> basically I'm just gonna follow what I wrote in the book and this kind of gives you a sneak peek uh, on the book, but I actually might also just do the whole book online, in which case you can see everything. Um, so I just wanna see something here. I wanna just make sure that I'm live where I wanna be. <clears throat> okay, so here we have uh, the My Violin Method book one. This is for absolute and total beginners. You've never, ever, 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 ever touched, breathed on, or looked at a violin. This is where you're gonna start. Even if you've never played an instrument before. And in fact, this is specially made for you if you have never played an instrument before. If you have, this just goes a lot faster. So I'm just gonna give you a really brief introduction because a lot of people are seeking to learn more about the violin um, but they kind of don't know where to get started. So I just thought I would give my input. So I'm going to teach this to you as if I was in my first private lesson with you. Um, I always basically teach the same thing every time, but sometimes little, you know, different facts come out every time. So I just wanted to keep it live so that kind of keep it casual, you know, take your questions if I can see them. <laughs> Cause, uh, I'm actually, on a few platforms right now. So hopefully, hopefully I catch them. But if I don't, I will answer your comments afterwards. In fact, like or comment this if you're watching so that uh, I know I can actually answer any questions that you have. Hi, Mark. Okay, so lesson one, the parts of the violin. I know it doesn't seem that interesting, at least to some people or maybe most people, but it's vital because as you learn violin, you're gonna to need to know these words. So if you don't know these words, you're gonna have no idea what to do. If I say, put your finger closer to the scroll and you don't know where the scroll is, how do you know what to do? <clears throat> Speaking of the scroll, this is the scroll, but on my violin, it doesn't look like a scroll, it looks like a head. So but it's still, a, I would still call it the scroll. So <clears throat> um, here we go. So this big part, here, this main chunky part. With, okay, this is called the body. This here is called the neck. This is called scroll, as we covered. Um, and here you see these four pegs here. These are pegs or tuning pegs. And then we have four strings, obviously. The strings go across the fingerboard. So this is this long black part. That's the fingerboard, because that's where you're gonna put your fingers when you play. And then the four strings go over this bridge, right? Uh, guitars have bridges too. This pulls the strings up so that they're off the fingerboard, right? So basically when you put your finger down, let's say um, you don't play like this, but let's say you did. Actually you could play it. So let's say you put your finger here. Now the string's only gonna vibrate from the bridge to where your finger is. That's a high note, right? So if I make the string longer, the note is lower, and then if I take my finger all off completely, um, this top part here is is called the nut, and um, though I don't usually teach that word in the first lesson, um, the string stops vibrating there, right? So uh, that's the longest and lowest that string can go. Strings are made to sound uh, at a certain pitch, so it's important to never go higher than that pitch when you're tuning the violin. Um, so anyway, as you put your fingers down, you're making the string, you know, shorter and shorter and the pitch goes higher and higher. So, um, 
uh, we got the bridge, okay? And then down here, you probably have four of these. I have one, and this is called, these are called the fine tuners. So these make big changes in tuning, and these make little changes in tuning, and they're both important when you're tuning. Now, how do I tune without these? Well, you just use the peg. So usually on cheaper instruments, you have all four, and then usually um, you, uh, sorry, when you get a more fancy vibe, the pegs are a lot better, so you actually don't really need them. Hello, Funk Medic official. Can't wait to hear your music again. That's been a long time. Um, we're just going over the parts of the violin. For anyone who has never touched the violin before, if you have touched it, you probably know most of the things I'm going to be saying in this lesson here. It's a brief lesson. But maybe you'll learn a fact or two, you know? Because I do like to explain how things work as well. So anyway, we have our body, we have our neck, right? So the body is hollow. This is our amplification system. So what happens is when you pluck the string, or if you were to bow it, the string vibrates. And as we discussed, it vibrates from here to here where it touches, right? So where it can't vibrate past that point. Um, and then what happens is the vibration goes through the bridge, which is carved in such a way as to optimally transfer the vibration. I think that's so cool. And then if you look inside your violin through these here F holes, it looks like an F. So if you look in, you'll see a post. That's called the sound post. And what that does is it gives extra tension between the front and the back here. You can play, if, it, if your sound post has fallen, it'll rattle. You can still play, it'll sound kind of nasally in my experience. In any case, the vibration goes through the bridge, through the sound post, travels throughout the whole violin, and then comes out through the F holes. So if you're performing, you know, um, you want to face your F holes towards the audience if you have a live audience or towards the mic if you are recording. So if you're recording, and this is actually good for engineers to know as well, for recording, usually you put um, a room mic and a mic right above the F holes, kind of like as close as you can, at least in my experience when we've tested things out. So you're bowing. <laughs> And then I'll just hold this here weirdly. And then the mic is like here. <laughs> so it's gotta be in your face. Hello, AB channel of music. Absolute beginner, that's what I use AB for. I'd love to know what your AB stands for. Um, anyway, so when you perform, you have to face the F holes towards the audience. In a, lot, in a regular live private lesson, I would demonstrate this. I find it unlikely that it's gonna have the same effect on the mic, but I'm willing to try. So let's say you, I'm gonna aim this at the mic. So I'm gonna aim my F holes at my Blue Yeti microphone. Okay, now here's my test. I wonder if this is gonna work. I'm only sitting so I can get a good kind of camera angle. Nor I like standing though. Okay, so. Now I'm facing my F holes away. I'm going to play at the same volume. Let's see. So you guys tell me, was that quieter? In real life, it would be quieter. But online, they have a lot of uh, things that they do to change the sound. So I'm super curious if that uh, was louder the first time. Let me know. Uh, moving on. <clears throat> Okay, what else we got? Oh, this is important. Okay, this guy right here. This is the chin rest. Mine's in the center. Yours is 99% chance on the left side of the violin. I think the camera slipped on these things, but this is the left side right here. Um, so this is the chin rest, but it really should be called the jaw rest because I've seen so many students that go, oh, it's a chin rest? Cool, I'm gonna put my chin there. Now, does this, is this what it looks like when a professional plays? No, it doesn't look like that, right? And in fact, uh, if this was more on the left, um, it, would, it would look even weirder. Actually, let me show you. Okay. So here's, a, here's how your chin rest plate looks. So if, if a lot of people, they go, oh, well, let me put it, you know, on my throat and like, 
this is what Hillary Hahn looks like. No, it's crazy. So what happens is your jaw is going to make contact. And I'm going to show you that in a second. Stay, stay with me here. Okay, so for the next step, you know what the chin rest is. Next, you're going to need to know this next word. That's, my violin's kind of dark, so it's hard to see. That's the end button, right? The end button, I've heard it called a couple things. Button, just button. There's another word I'm blanking out on as well. And um, anyway, so you need to know this. Now, I'm going to tell you the proper way to hold the violin. And uh, if you have any questions, or if you want to send me any pictures, maybe on my Facebook page um, or any videos, I'll help you fix it. Because the thing is, there's always a reason. If it looks weird, it is probably weird. It's probably a little bit incorrect. And the fix is going to be pretty easy if you can let any teacher or me, you know, help you out. Um, <laughs> Yeah, actually, thank you. This this is kind of a nice violin. Um, it's not as fancy as most people's, actually, but I did finally drop a few dollars on this. Uh, I actually got it at Sam Ash. They were expanding their violin selection, and this was the most expensive one they had at the time. And I like it. You know why I like it, though? Because the neck is a little bit thinner. So not all violins are exactly the same. And this one is a little bit thinner, and my hand just felt so comfortable. I didn't want to stop playing in the store. And then I went back a couple months later and I, I bought it. Um, I, actually in a rush because I was scared it was gone. But like, if you're ever shopping for violin and you just can't put one down, that's probably the right one for you. Um, anyway, so as I was saying, uh, holding the violin. Okay, we don't need this bow. This, don't need that when you're first starting. Okay, so let's talk about resting position. This is super easy. Uh, this applies to when you're sitting. So I'm sitting in a chair, and I got the end button on my left leg, and I'm holding the scroll, I mean the, the neck with my hand. I've seen this too, you can hold the body. I've seen this where you're holding both. It doesn't really matter that much. The important thing is it's on your left leg definitely, and the strings are facing outwards, because otherwise you won't be able to do this, which is when you're putting Okay, so whenever you see the violin like this in my lap or anywhere in the world online ever in any situation, even if it's close up, you know, you only see that, it means they're in resting position. Um, a little bit, it's a little bit different standing, but uh, if you're in an orchestra, you're sitting. So there are benefits to knowing these things for sitting down. I feel like I'm rambling, sorry. In any case, um, I'm holding the violin. Now, I want... This is resting position, okay? Uh, we're gonna, and I'm gonna show you playing position now. It looked, maybe it looks simple, but actually a lot of people uh, have slightly incorrect position, which makes the violin unstable. And I'm gonna help you with that. So, <clears throat> I want you to think about this. The, um, your collarbone is gonna be a, an important contact point. Okay, so your collarbone. Uh, that's where your, the bottom of the violin is gonna rest, okay? so. Now in terms of where, so the violin could be in a few different places and most of those places are incorrect. And it's not even just because I say so or because anyone says so, it's because uh, it, it's not workable and you're gonna hurt yourself first of all and you're gonna not be able to play very efficiently, okay? So here I want you to imagine that you have uh, a point on the front of your neck. And I want you to imagine that you have a point on the side of your neck like Frankenstein, okay? So you have the front, think about the front and think about the middle. Now, think about 45 degrees in the middle. So right in between there, okay? That's where the end button is gonna go. I've seen way too many beginner students. They put the end button on their throat. I mean, even just, <laughs> I make this choking sound, but it's true. I don't know how you're not choking if you're doing this incorrectly. So it's not in the center of your body. No, no, no. Because again, that's not where I said, it's not 45 degrees. That's the only way I can think to explain it. So you're gonna picture this 45 degree spot and you're gonna put the button there. Now it's, I don't know if you can see, but it's also resting, and I don't know if it's show, it's resting on my collarbone. I don't really use a shoulder rest because I have a setup that enables me to get away from that. 
and it makes me scrunch my shoulder up and hurt my shoulder, but it's fine to use one. So um, the placement is still the same. So the, notice that the, the violin body, sorry, my screen keeps uh, shutting off. The violin body here, like the, the violin, see this whole area. And now actually um, it's possible that, see this metal's in the middle, the metal, oh, this one's in the middle too. Sometimes they're on the side, that's fine. The point is, see where my hand is going? This whole chunk, it's gonna go. All of that is gonna touch your neck, all that surface area. If there is a space between your neck and the violin, you're doing it wrong and you're gonna hurt yourself, so be careful. Meaning, so close the space. This is when they say, bring the violin to you. This is part of the thing that they're talking about. So you have to make sure that you don't go like this and then reach to put your neck there and then have this, it's all weird and it's gonna hurt your neck. And it's it's straining you, so you gotta be careful. <clears throat> So let's talk about this again. So the violin is on resting position. Raise it a couple inches, just with your hand. Then you're gonna flip it around, right? So resting position, raise it, and then aim the button towards your neck, okay? And then you have to make sure there's full, full, full contact. And what happens is your jawbone, see how there's a bone and then it's soft underneath, right? So the jawbone actually goes over the lip or the edge of your chin rest. So pretty much every chin rest has this. There's some kind of like lip, you know, some little higher surface. Now, I'm actually, I don't know if you noticed this, but this one, the chin rest is a lot lower. So I'm gonna use a shoulder rest on this one because I don't have a specifically high chin rest. So I'm gonna use the shoulder rest. And now it has raised the violin up <clears throat> in height. And then now I can um, place the violin, look ahead and look down a little bit. And then now I'm holding the violin. It is a test to let go, but I don't recommend that you continually push, push, push and strain on the neck. That's how people get injuries. I mean, I wouldn't say it's like a lifelong debilitating injury, but I would say at worst it's uncomfortable for a little while. <clears throat> why, why even go there? Because the more comfortable you are, the more you can practice and the more you'll enjoy practice. Um, okay, any questions so far? Please type them. I think the people watching at this moment already know how to hold the violin, but uh, if you're watching this after the fact, type in your questions, I'll answer them after. Um, one last word on this is that uh, a lot of people do this, and it's so close to being the right position, is it's down here. <laughs> Thanks, okay, good. So a lot of people, the Chin rest is, uh, the chin rest is down. Oh, actually, I'm gonna use this one. I have the chin rest here near the chin, but it should actually be near the left corner of the jaw. So this isn't correct. And what I tell them to do is picture, I don't know if you've ever seen those, um, like when a building doesn't have an elevator and then they have near the stairs, they have this uh, device for handicapped people in a wheelchair. And then they would, or I, actually, I don't know if it takes the wheelchair or not, but basically it's like a lift and it goes up uh, next to the stairs to bring them up the stairs. So I want you to think about that. Take it where it's incorrectly, the end button is on the front of the neck, incorrectly there, you're gonna push it up like that. And most times in my experience as a teacher, teaching hundreds of students, it's gonna be most comfortable. Basically the contact point is usually in the middle. This left, this shoulder rest on the, I mean, this chin rest on the left side is like crazy. I mean, I swear every single person likes it better in the middle. So I have a, a center, it's called the center chin rest. This one is Kuhn, is their later edition. Uh, not Kuhn, sorry, um, Cradle, K-R-E-E-D-L-E. -E -E. And this is adjustable, um, which is cool. Anyone who's been around a long time knows <sighs> you're always going to look for that perfect, perfect, perfect setup. So of course I got this to try to do that. You can change the height and the direction. So. Anyway, so um, this so it's more likely going to be in the center. I've even had a couple kids um, who don't have super long necks who actually like it better without the chin rest at all, which is a valid way of playing. There's a book called Before the Chin Rest, which a teacher recommended to me, which I never read. But the idea is you don't want to. Um, 
freeze yeah. up and squish everything. So uh, anyway, yeah, your head's gonna come down. So remember if it's here, you know, it's like on your Adam's apple and your throat, slide it up onto your shoulder. Sometimes I say, make it as high up on your shoulder as you can. I feel like that's a good way because you can only go so far, right? High up. And uh, if you wanna test it out, you can look ahead, look down, see if you can hold it. This really only works when you're using a shoulder rest. If you're not using a shoulder rest, it might look something like this if you try that. So right now my neck is a lot longer, right? So if I go down, it's kind of hard. And you notice I have to kind of contort in all sorts of ways, but it's some it's somewhat of a test. I mean, if it was here, I definitely couldn't do that at all, but your shoulder is gonna help. Try to keep your shoulders relaxed. Okay, so I feel like I've been ranting long enough. Um, can you use, uh, can you do a bow tutorial on how to use a bow properly? Absolutely, I would love to do that. In fact, um, I would like to do a live session every day. I'm thinking noon. And I actually would love to go through my whole book, I'm thinking. So if you have any objections to that, let me know. But um, basically, yeah, I, I'm thinking about taking you through the whole book because uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, so many people that I know as a teacher are interested in learning violin, but um, I haven't necessarily started the journey. And here I am teaching all this other advanced stuff. Uh, and they, the only way for them to join me on that is to learn the basics and then work through it. So I'm thinking about doing this. Let me know your feedback on that. If you think I should do that, go through the whole book. Um, hi, Sean. Nice to see you. So uh, I guess in order to finish this chapter, let me tell you one other thing. When you're holding the violin, you do want the strings to be parallel to the floor. It's a little bit of an arm workout, but you get used to it. So basically you wanna make sure it's not drooping. Drooping is bad. Parallel is good. Actually, the, the scroll should be slightly higher than the bridge so that the strings are parallel to the ground. Because if you look at it, if the violin is parallel to the ground, the strings actually are sloping downwards. So to get the strings to slope upwards, you have to go up a little bit. And that's translated by saying, get the scroll a little bit higher than the top of the bridge, and then you're safe. Okay, guys, that's the classical way. Fiddle, I don't know all the rules of fiddle. I definitely know fiddle players don't always hold it up, right, necessarily. But also know that there's a lot of things that classical violinists do that fiddle players don't necessarily do, at least as often. Um, and part of it is how you're holding it. So if you plan on um, progressing in the classical world, I would say hold it up so that it's parallel to the ground. Okay, so um, thanks so much for joining me. And uh, if you're watching this after the fact, please uh, like or comment on this. If, uh, I guess whatever platform you're watching this from, if you're not following or subscribe to me, it might be a good idea to do that so that you can catch more of these. Um, also, it would help me because the more exposure I have, the more popular it is and then more people can find it. So even if you uh, know all this basic stuff, you know, it may be good to do that. And give me your feedback so that I can adjust future lessons. I'll put out a schedule soon, uh, but for now, thanks for joining me. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, Demilsa, I was just, I was just ending up, but thanks so much for coming in. You can watch this video on playback. Um, it, it'll save. So it's enough rambling for me for one day. Thanks again. Uh, happy practicing. See you soon.